Here's today's first word daily devotion. On July the 1st, we are going to end the book of Kings today. And as we end the book of Kings, we're going to see hope right in the very end. But let's go back to July 1st and let's look at 2 Kings 25. And in the ninth year of the reign of the 10th month, on the 10th day of the month, Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, came with all his army against Jerusalem and laid siege to it. And they built siege works all around it. So the city was besieged till the 11th year of King Zedekiah. Now look at verse 5. But the army of the Chaldeans pursued the king and overtook him in the plains of Jericho, and all his army was scattered from him. Then they recaptured, or then they captured the king and brought him up to the king of Babylon at Riblah. And they passed sentence on him. They slaughtered the sons of Zedekiah before his eyes, put out his eyes of Zedekiah, and bound him in chains, and took him to Babylon. So look how sad this is. Here is the king, and the king, he has his own son slaughtered before him. And the last thing that he sees is his sons being slaughtered, because after they slaughter his sons, they put out his eyes. In the fifth month, on the seventh day of the month, that was the 19th year of King Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, uh, Neb Uzaradan, the captain of the bodyguard, a servant of the king of Babylon, came to Jerusalem, and he burned the house of the Lord, and the king's house, and all the houses of Jerusalem, every great house he burned down. And then look at what happens next in the narrative. Next, we are taken back to the glory of the temple. And the reason we're taken back to the glory of the temple is to lament. Remember what the temple represents. The temple represents the presence of God with his people. And here, of course, they have sacrificed his presence for their own way. And now reality catches up with their sinfulness. And so look at verse 21. Look at verse 21. Judah was taken into exile out of its land. But look at the very end of this king's reference here. Notice there's a remnant, but notice who the remnant is. In the 37th year of the exile of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, in the 12th month on the 27th day of the month, evil Merodach, king of Babylon, in the year he began to reign graciously, freed Jehoiakim, king of Judah, from prison. He spoke kindly to him and gave him a seat above the seats of Babylon who were uh, seats of the king who were with him in Babylon, Jehoiakim, put off his prison garments, and every day of his life he dined regularly with the king's table, and his allowance, a regular allowance, was given him by the king according to his daily deeds as long as he lived. Now, what's the remnant here? Go back to chapter 24 and verse 8, and we'll see that Jehoiakim was evil, but God was favorable. And that's a good mark for us to remember. The hope of the Bible leads into amazing grace. And there is hope that is left alive. Even though the people were faithless, God remains faithful, as Paul's going to tell Timothy, for he cannot deny himself. Now let's go over to Romans 1. I want you to notice this. Romans 1 is this passage that we talk about, uh, no man being without excuse. And I think that there is a universal judgment, that there is a universal knowledge of God because every man is created in God's image. But if we read Romans 1, especially as we're going through the Old Testament, then we should read Romans 1 first as the story of Israel. It's not as if Paul is telling the story of the world outside of Scripture. No, no. He's using Scripture and all of those linguistic patterns and all of the way that the Bible has unfolded its story. Romans 1, then, is a story of Israel first. Then it's a story of the world. And so look at verse 24. Therefore, God gave them up in the lust of their hearts to impurities, to dishonoring of their bodies, among themselves. And so this is God giving them up. It's a picture not only of humanity, but it's a picture of Israel. Now let's end the Psalter today as well. We will not only end Kings and head to Chronicles, but we'll also end the Psalter. Psalm 150, praise the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in his mighty heavens. Praise him for his mighty deeds. Praise him in according to his excellent greatness. Now, let me say this to you as we close our reading time for today. Do you realize what's just happened today? You have made it through half of the year. You have read half of the Bible, and you're on your way to reading the rest of the Bible here on our First Word Daily Devotion, 
as we read the ESV Everyday Bible every day. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow.